On Fang Adana Mat on Sovin Tiak, I would like to welcome everybody that has come out here and to celebrate the life of our dad, grandpa, and great grandpa. And let's start with a verse. Let's sing. Worthy art thou, Lord Divine. Worthy art thou, Lord Divine, to receive this praise of mine, to receive this grateful praise of mine. And thy to me, receive me to thee, joyfully my soul delights in thee. Lord, I thank thee for thy love. Draw my heart to thine above. True and faithful would I be. Jesus, draw me close to thee. From the dawn of my first day, thou hast led me all the way, guided law, then kept me all the way. And thy lifeblood thou didst give, that forever I may live, that with thee forever I may live. Lord, I thank Thee for Thy love. Draw my heart to Thine above. True and faithful would I be. Jesus, draw me close to Thee. All my guilt thou dost remove in thy great redeeming love through thy great redeeming grace and love. And this love so full and free gives me joy to come to thee. Boldly, gladly do I come to thee. Lord, I thank Thee for the Draw my heart to Thine above. True and faithful would I be. Jesus, draw me close to Thee. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Jesus, we thank you for that you have us but here you brought. We thank you for that you have your life and your genoed bewiesen this to us people. And we are here from the world that live and celebrate for us dad. And we must be able to be with us and all the top seven here when we move and off to your ear. Amen. All right, I believe we um, will have what we will have to do. This is a bit Yes, good evening, everybody. Xayok, welcome. Welcome to hear a little history of, of a man that have lived uh, a long life, that have uh, lived through the, the depression years, have lived through war time, World War II, and what else? Pioneer years in Mexico, pioneer years in Belize. So he have gone through a lot of things. So I want to hear a little history of, of my dad. On a winter day in 1925, a baby boy was born to John and Elizabeth Cornelson and Morris. It was December 8 when Margaret and Mary got a baby brother named Henry. The boy grew up in Steinbach. 
Five-year-old Henry was enjoying a day with Daddy on the field. They were raking and binding hay with horses as their motor. Henry begged to ride up front on the baler. His dad had warned him, but suddenly his finger got caught in a rope and nearly pinched off the top of his finger. <clears throat> his dad took Henry back to the house where Mama treated the wound with smoked sheep wool. He remembered at his brother Peter's burial he had a tantrum spell and his dad spanked him right there. He was not one to fight or get into trouble easily, though. As a child, he had whooping cough, and they had a box of sawdust to vomit into when coughing. As a preschooler, Henry went to Rosenard Greenbank School for two months. John Lowen and Henry were the only beginners that year. John went home for lunch. In the afternoon, he brought a picture of a banana cut from a magazine. Henry had six different teachers. Ernst Reimer, his first grade teacher, was well respected by students and he rarely needed to punish. When war started, Ernst Reimer quit teaching and went to army. Later, the same school hired him again, but things were not the same anymore. Soon after he was out of school, Henry got a job. When he was just a teenager and working hard with thrashing, he ate poorly because he didn't like the tomatoes in the sandwich. As a growing schoolboy, he must have wondered, as adults discussed issues of the Great Depression, living through the dirty 30s in Canada. The grasshoppers had eaten everything green they found. People couldn't afford to drink coffee. In Depression years, when Henry and his dad and brothers-in-law were going west to find jobs for an income, there were about 30 people in the train car with them. They helped in the fields, starting in Alberta and came east cleaning off fields. Following the Depression was World War II. With many men going to work, the teenage guys had to get jobs too. Henry signed up as a conscientious objector, which exempted him from going out to war. He was placed on a farm in Plum Coulee, where he worked at the Manitoba Pool Elevator, which stood 96 feet high and had a shingle roof on top. At age 17, Henry worked at a train station and there damaged his heart from lifting the heavy train doors. During the time he worked at McTavish Elevator, he lived at Buster and Mavis Miller. They were a good couple, just a few years older than him. They trusted him with checks and so on. They only ate lunch at 12, they only ate at, at 12 lunch and 6 evening. Sometimes he went to the store and bought himself a chocolate bar. Their daughter had to drive truck because Mr. Miller wanted the girl to marry Henry. He got paid 25 cents a day. At first, he had to sleep in a shabby bed frame in a room not closed well. At night, he had to fling the rats off his blanket. This room was the elevator office. One day, Mr. Miller spotted a sand socks close to Henry's window outside on the ground, which was a sign of thieves. After that, he slept in the cellar. Sometimes, Mr. Miller, Miller came down to the cellar to drink beer with him. Henry tasted his first soda drink as a young teenager. Coke was not a usual thing for them. But one Saturday at a store in Rosenort, he stood outside and drank his orange crush. He remembered the first yellow and red Pepsi truck. Two decades later, there was a cooler of sodas at the school picnic where everyone could take one. Gerhard Neufeld's two and a half miles away, had Zingstun every Tuesday where Henry sang tenor. An American, Paul Roberts, and Henry together bought a new truck, a 1947 Mercury, for $2,225. It didn't have a spare tire. Just after the war, tires were scarce. When he moved to Mexico, Mr. Roberts bought Henry's share of the truck. Another American wanted him to log and clear his piece of land and use it a few years, but he only worked the first one winter and after that he had promised to move along to Mexico. In Canada, Henry loaded logs with mules. They had to pull as hard as possible. On plowing days, the mules' front feet were tied together for the night. No feed nor water during the day, not much chance to rest nor graze, just work day after day. Henry helped with setting up an oil plant in Altoona. He was asked to be the overseer of another plant, but he moved to Mexico instead. In 1948, Henry's family moved to Mexico. The families immigrating from Canada all lived in one large house, waiting till their own houses were done. 
When they arrived in that yard, they met Ben Bedwick's oldest daughter at the hedge. They chatted a while, and she invited them in for lunch. Wilmer was too shy, but Henry accepted the invitation and enjoyed a tasty meal of potatoes and pickles. Soon after that, Henry asked Mary to come together more often. One time, they sat in his dad's truck for a date. They'd usually part with a hug, maybe even a kiss. After some months, Henry's sister, Greta, and Henry Klassen came to Mexico for a visit. They wanted the privilege of attending the wedding before heading back home to Canada, so things began, began moving fast. Henry and Mary were baptized on October 9, and their wedding date was set for November 20. For the wedding, since Henry had a brown suit anyway, Mary sewed a brown dress. During the week before the wedding, they kept working. He hauled wood and she cleaned. Henry and Greta drove them to the wedding. The reception took place at her parents' farm with fast tables set up outside at the end of the house. When they were first married, they lived with Mary's parents since her mom was ill. After a year, they moved onto their own 60 acres of land, which they got from their parents. Together, they gathered stones on the field and built a brick wall as a fence around their yard and garden. Henry hauled lumber and Mary sold it. After some years, they were blessed with their firstborn, but she lived only for one night. Long-distance trucking brought its challenges, with Henry being gone from the family so much. In Canada, uncles and aunts had to take care of Mary and the family a lot. When there was a flood and Henry was at home, Isaac Brandt went to check up on Mary. He took her along from Moore's side to Steinbeck's side of the river. This will be a treat for the boys, Henry thought, as he loaded the cuckoo into the car. The box was wet in one corner, but it was a good bargain at $1 for 10 pounds. An insurance company was selling out supplies of a train car that had tipped. He had already picked up three big bags of one-day-old breads at the bakery's back door and even got a bag of free donuts with chocolate icing. And it being right after Christmas, he'd found Christmas cakes for $2 instead of the regular $12. Now for the milk stop. Their neighbor, Peter Lowen, brought his cream to town to sell, but the milk he dumped so anyone could get as much as they wanted. It provided all the milk and butter that Henry and Mary needed, and once he got home, his boys enjoyed toast and cups of chocolate milk. Henry and, Mano, Henry and Mano Lowen made the first trip to haul supplies to British Honduras. After Henry's three loads to Belize, it was time to move his family. With three little boys and one on the way, they boarded the train in Chihuahua to travel to Belize. They flew by military plane from Mexico City to Belize. It was their first plane ride ever. Once the passengers were all inside, the plane's door was tied shut with a rope. The plane made five stops. Each time before taking off, the pilot first ran both motors high to make sure they were in order. Three-year-old John asked, how can a plane turn if the tires are in the sky? On the train, people were waiting to get into the restroom, but the door remained closed on end. Finally, a dressed-up lady stepped out, having washed and curled her hair, oblivious to the row of people anxiously waiting to relieve themselves. In April of 1964, five little boys and a sister jumped into the 1954 Chevy car with their mom and dad. They picked up Mr. Joe Friesen and Melvin Reimer and started their journey. Joe and Melvin sat up front, each with a child on their lap. Henry and Mary were going to work in Canada for a summer. In Canada, David Friesen bought the car, in spite of one bad noisy piston. In January of 1967, Peter Reimer and Henry were trucking on a route from Detroit to, Ch to Chicago. A severe snowstorm came in, bringing 23 inches of snow, jamming 100 miles of traffic for 30 hours. They walked a mile to a store, and chocolate bars was all they had left. Later that year, Henry suddenly had a heart attack while driving. Peter took the truck's steering wheel and drove fast, way over speed limit. As they entered Reimer's yard, he honked the horn long and loud until the alarm staff came running. They sped Henry to the hospital with a car. He was hospitalized for more than 40 days. After this, after 
After this attack, he didn't do long distance trucking again. He hauled gravel. At the end of 1967, Ben Bidwick came to retrieve the Cornelson family back to Belize. Henry was well known at the border and the guys thought he was joking when he declared he's moving away from Canada. They drove down with a blue pickup with a two-wheel trailer. In the home-built trailer was a mattress, on the pickup's back seat a potty. Mary had sliced a whole bag of bread to travel back to Belize and they had catsup sandwiches. During the time of Hurricane Hattie, Henry had one jack and all the neighbors wanted to use it to level their houses. He charged 25 cents a day to help keep track where the jack stayed. One man kept it for one week and thought it was too much he had to pay. Some didn't pay at all. It was convenient to have the river close by. Henry drove down to the river with tractor and trailer to fetch water. He took a fishing net to the river and soon had his two big buckets full. Then he trod through the mud by foot to sell his fish. Other times he nailed them to the posts in the hand barn as fish were good vitamins for the hens. Yeah, well, that's a little part of the history. So I guess now we'll go over to this slideshow. Who will guess how old dad is here? How old do you think he is? 25. 21. 17. Okay, I'm not too sure, but I have seen a passport picture where he looks, where he has just uh, the same uh, hairstyle, and there he is like 20, 32 or 33, so I guess he looks younger here, but his passport when he, that he made to come to Belize, there he looks um, almost like this. Here he's 18. I think this is around their time when they got married, before or after. This is when he drove for Rhymer's Express, long distance, the one in the green cap, hauling logs. This is the elevator he worked in McTavish. This is where they got to the border, Chatamal. Rhymer's Express, hauling oranges for N Nord. Eating sardines. I guess that was his first aid. Nineteen seventy, FTC. That blue pickup that we heard that we came to Belize with, that little brown shirt guy, that's me on back of the truck. This is the truck he hauled fuel for his filling station. Mary is the youngest. This must be in 1983. Here you can see some bullet holes from his delivery truck. I think they're back from church here. That black truck have made many trips to Stan Creek. 
first time and last time I see dad driving motorcycle. This must be around 71, maybe. This is still the old house that was down by the river. One day we, I think he invited the, the Duick's cousins to break down the house. Looking for shame grass. This is where he was sick in Toronto for 40 or over 40 days when he was 41. This is around 1971 with his nice white mini mook. He bought this filling station from John Aldick right there where Friesen Hatcheries is. The little guy is Henry, my brother Henry, from there and up. I think this truck has some marks too from, from shotgun. We bought it, I'm not sure where we bought it from, but uh, Levi Cornelson used to own this truck. It was a passenger truck for Spanish Lookout. This must be around 88, maybe, because I know that was their first trip to Canada after, yeah. Off to church. Here, Dad is turning, I'm not too sure, I think the next picture has it. Here, Dad is within 20 days, the age that I have now. Here, we are taking Uncle Richard and Aunt Shirley to the airport. George's wedding. Nineteen ninety six. Ben and Betty's wedding. I'm not sure what year that was, 97, I just know it was in March. This is the house there beside the store. Moving to the new place close to the store. Young couple on the beach. Coming back from Placencia. Hmm? I think we came back. These people came and visited my parents for their 50th anniversary. They're David and Esther Dwick.
Christmas time was always special. This is the first house they built here in Belize. This is where they spent the Hurricane Hattie in, along with their neighbors. It was a little bit bigger that time. I guess uh, it's me, my sister Naita, and Henry all born in that house. Dad's brother, Uncle Wilmer. This is the first anniversary that FTC celebrated in 2001. His brother-in-law, Richard. Four generations. Brother and sister. Time for a checkup. This is his 80th birthday. I gave him a cane for his birthday. At first, he quickly threw it under the bed so that nobody would see it. A load for crossroads. Always something to do. Father and sons. Sister Anna's house in Manitoba, so it must be in 2006. Dad with his brother and sister. Schnapsprat was one of his favorite games. If somebody opens the bannet, he'll be there soon. A 
visiting his cousins in Canada. Guatemala City went for a heart checkup. This is Big Creek, I think. Last time, I think he was on the tractor. Cleaning up stuff. This is when Peter Ginter's house burnt down. He helped cleaning up. We heard of a car in the, what Colleen was reading, and it was a car just like this that had uh, how many, 10 or 11 people when we went to Canada. I don't think it had that many seat belts, but we still made it somehow. A two-door car. Some anniversary. Always something to do. This is on Richard and Evangeline's wedding. Campeche. his nephew. Playing with little Braden.
shoe polish. His 80th birthday, I think. His friend David Penner came to visit him. Here he got 90 years old. His cousin gave him a hug, Walter Penner. Yal Buck. This is when the building, got, the, the property got sold beside FTC. This was one highlight for him, meet friends. Chetamal. His little nephew died. Hummingbird distributors. Fixing his foot in Merida. These were people from, from the U.S. They, they want a little history about, about Mennonite Center. So somebody had sent them to my dad. Maybe he would remember the best about Mennonite Center. He loves shopping. He loved tires. Another checkup. Heart specialist. Expo. This is the last time he have been on the truck. This was for the 60th anniversary for Spanish Lookout. These people came visit, visit him. The Hamita Spot family. They all came on motorcycles to Golden Age. This is where he bought his last ride. He always had a way to, how to, to come up the stairs. He couldn't walk, but then he'd crawl up.
He came for pork chops. Short train. This is uh, three years ago at Corny Friesen's place for Christmas. I check up in Chatham Mall. He always says to, to look at a new truck doesn't cost him anything. So he's feeling the, see how smooth and how nice it is. This is Henry Entz from El Valle. He already passed away too, recently. Chetamal, lots of beef. Auction sale. We had auction sale in November. November a year ago. Seventieth anniversary cake. Albert and Mally from San Ignacio, George's stepdaughter. This was where we cleaned up some old stuff a little over a year ago. Norman Reimer visiting with that. Doctora Claudia. Checking out new technology. Mother was sick in Orange Walk. He dad was quite worried. Some fresh muffins. Last Christmas at the park. Coffee was very important to him. This was on his 95th birthday. January 10 of this year, we had, we had the Dweeks over for Christmas. So there he looked at the chocolate again.
This was five days before he died. Seven? Okay. This was five days before. Then we'll have a song by a small group, Myron. Thank you. I think uh, we'll hear some more history. Yeah, that was quite different than a lot of people. Uh, when I was a little boy, we always had to, to put gas in the carburetor to, to have the car running to start it up. And uh, he would not look for a bottle to put in gas. He would just go with the hose and he would fill his mouth and then release the, the, the butterfly at the, at the carburetor and he would blow it with his mouth in there and he would start the, the truck. You know, he, was, he, he was a tough old man. I mean, he's, 
he was different than a lot of people. So we'll go over to some more history. Henry loved to cook. The children loved his cooked beans with pigtail. Breakfast was often ready when they got up in the morning. On days when they were sick, he would prepare a pot of nice hot soup. He also baked chocolate cake from scratch. Henry and Mary were proud to be raising the best tomatoes in Belize. Mary stepped up on the partial drum and reached for the highest tomato on the hybrid plant. That's 40 from this plant, she declared. The fertilizer trick must be working. Henry had set up his corn harvesting machine close to the garden. As he thrashed corn, the hull spread across the tomatoes, plants, and orange trees. Henry took the tomatoes to Kyle, where a retail store sold them through their small window. The use of fertilizer added to their success, but the birds sat on the orange trees and were tempted by the tomatoes. When they ate half-ripe half tomatoes, Mary made tomato gravy served over fresh cooked beans. Henry hauled oranges and grapefruits for Nord. He also hauled tractors, chicken and eggs, lumber and gravel. His trucking and merchandise business was named Hummingbird Distributors and he owned it until the year 2000. The first years he made many trips himself, but after his heart attack at the age of 59, he left most of the trucking for other drivers. One day, Henry was on a trip to Mungo Creek again, selling eggs. On his way home, the river got flooded and he couldn't cross. A tortilla chips vendor truck was also waiting for the water to lower. And these men took chips and eggs to a poor lady who lived close by and ate a meal there. She cooked eggs but didn't have salt to put on them. They ended up waiting 18 hours until till they could finally cross the river. When Henry took chicken to town, he sometimes had to clean out the customer's stinky, thickly frozen freezers to put in fresh chicken. In Mexico and Canada, his trucking trips were long, but in Belize, they were often one-day trips, mostly to Cayo or Stan Creek. The day before going out, he gathered the supplies from businesses in the community. On those days, the children could go with him. No matter how late Henry got home from his trip, if he had brought a thermos of ice cream from town, the children would all gather round to get their spoons full. When he took milk to Western Dairies, his youngest girls went along and would beg for chips. Henry was a mechanic. Someone once asked him to make a trip to Kyle. He said he first had to change the truck's transmission. A few hours later, he said the truck was ready to go. Henry bought the Taxico gas station in 1972. He hauled most fuel himself. He and his sons did oil changes and some repairs for customers. They sold tires, oil, and fuel. In 1974, he rented Abram Aldwick's truck to do logging at a clean and clear creek called Barton Creek. He drove the tractor through the creek, taking off the fan belt so it wouldn't hit the rad. He hauled logs to the sawmill and hired men to help him with sawing. The neighbor's tractor was not available during the day, so he rented it and worked the field at night time. Henry's have been out, in and out of church numerous times over the years. Family rejoiced when he quit drinking once and for all. For some years, he was usher at church. During his heart attack in 1997, he had a vision of where he was standing at the bottom of a stairway leading to heaven. Henry and Mary made a family trip in the summer of 1988. They flew to the States to prepare and pick up a station wagon. In 1993, they made another family trip with a red van. In 2006, they went for a Cornelson's family reunion, which was their last trip to Canada. He became a grandfather in 1981 and great-grandfather in 2004. He enjoyed Wednesday afternoons at Western Dairies with the seniors. In 2015, he had to have a toe amputated as a result of diabetes, which he had for about 15 years. 
Once their nest was empty, all the children had moved out of the two-story house at the river. In 1999, a new two-bedroom house was built further up in the center of the community. The vehicles and people to be seen were Henry's interests and entertainment. FTC was close enough to drive to with his scooter. Then, in June of 2017, they moved to Golden Age Homes. His doors were all securely locked and his van was clean. His teeth were gone by now, but that didn't keep him from eating steak. Grandchildren remember grandpa's chocolate bars and ice cold water in the fridge, him reading newspaper and his big Bible, saying Al Vaisha every time he sat down, and his loud snoring. Grandma and grandpa worked in the garden together and did laundry together. On rare occasions when grandchildren got to mow the lawn, grandpa gave a lot of safety instructions. There were always swings, wagons, tricycles, and tonka trucks for the children to play with. A lot more could be said of a man who lived 95 years. And Nathan will be sharing some more trucking stories, most of which were told by Grandpa himself. Okay, I hear some trucking stories. This is where, as if he would um, tell the story himself. I got paid by the mile. I did mostly reefer trucking. Sometimes I carried 120 half cattle, all hooked and hanging from the top. That drives worse than with a tank of water. Once I learned a lesson. Around one corner, I drove too fast. As I looked in the mirror, I saw the wheels off the ground. Then they tipped back again. I would have gotten demerits if I drove so rough that the cattle unhooked. In the next story, normally the company's guys unloaded the trucks, but this one Friday we had to unload it ourselves, or else wait until Monday. So we and the watchman unloaded 400 sacks of flour with no cart. We were so glad to be done and going home. Working a bit slanted and not being used to the job, by the time we got home, we were stiff for three days. <clears throat> okay, the next, next, uh, another story, but this is in, not as if he would tell it himself. It was New Year's Day, with the temperatures of 40 below. Nobody wanted to go out trucking on such a crazy day, so Dad took the trip. Trouble arose, the heater didn't work, and he was wearing only thin gloves and socks and Sunday shoes. He was 35 miles away from anywhere. He was debating what to do. The truck's water was empty. Before, the radiator were shutters that opened and closed as the motor changed temperature. He had taken this old truck because Reimer's other trucks were getting their names painted on. He decided to keep going. Up and downhill he drove, shutting the truck off and on. He glided into a closed truck stop. There was a watchman who called somebody to bring a new hose and fix Dad's truck. Another time, he stopped at a restaurant in Windsor, but he had no money because he hadn't gotten home in time to get money from the bank the previous day. So he borrowed $20 from a clerk and repaid her the next week. In Halleck, his first place to fill up the truck, he again borrowed money. In Wisconsin was a place where he could eat for free. They were closed when he arrived, but the watchman told him, just go in and eat. There is bread and ham and all. In the next story, on one trip from Mexico to Belize, I took along Peter Thiessen, a man from the old colony. He was a strong, tall man. We were supposed to load frames, but they were too heavy for me and another man to lift, so we decided to get a third man to lift them. Suddenly, we heard a banging on the other side of the truck, and there Mr. Thiessen was loading the frames all alone. A month later, Mr. Thiessen was on a trip again with someone else. Tired from traveling, the two men checked in at their motel room, turned on the gas stove to warm up the room, then plopped into bed to sleep. That stove never turned on, and the gases in the room killed both men. And then um, here's some more things about what he did with Peter together. Some, sometimes I took Peter along trip, on trips to Kotemak. I would stop in at his house. He went to prepare his clean clothes, and off we were. As I drove on long road trips, Mr. Thiessen, Thiessen 
put his arm on my seat back to tickle or rub me on my throat or cheek so I would stay awake. But in times when he fell asleep, I could poke my elbow into his ribs and he would not wake up. Dad was supposed to go on a trip to USA again for a bank manager and a Mr. Friesen. Nobody was available as a sideman. Dad met Mr. Radikop on the street and took him along to USA. The bank manager paid Dad 3,000 US dollars. Klaassen sold the stuff and the bank paid. When Dad lived in Mexico, he was more in USA than in Mexico. In Belize, when people asked him where he got his language from, he said he was a Canadian from Mexico living in Belize and spent much of his life in USA. And then the next story. In Canada, the gas filler only left, filled the truck with fuel. But in USA, if, he, if we stopped to fill the truck, the gas filler would check the tires and oil while my co-driver and I went to eat inside. If oil was needed, he'd take it from our toolbox. Okay, thank you. Maybe we should give the siblings a chance now if they want to say something before we open the mic. Every time when I was leaving with the car, my dad would first come and check the tires and water and oil. One saying that he has had, don't search for trouble, that comes on its own, or automatically. If you are the one always talking, you don't get smarter because you know all that already. Yeah, when I went to the businesses, when I was small, I went along to the businesses and when I was asking for chips, very seldom that I wouldn't get it. In the elevator, we have a show for day. Do I see the horror? I'm a up a count. You stone in the roof, you checked. And now, for your trick, see the I would next to say, I read the chant or have a drop check a chant by the count. So, so they have a count where they come a chant. And a chant is somebody what everybody can accept. He stayed my hero to the end. Um, here is a poem that my sister Anna wanted me to read here. She wrote it herself. A tribute to Dad. Going along to Kyle with Dad, a father-daughter bonding we had. Those memories are special to me now. A lot of good seed my dad did so. I remember Dad brought home ice cream, which was every little child's dream. We nine children, a spinful all got, we didn't care, the weather was hot. Meat we could not always afford, they asked and prayed to the Lord. Down to the river, Dad went to set up traps as if God sent. Hungry fish, that was all it took to feed the family and cook. 
One for the family, that was his wish, to provide another meal, another dish. The other fish was fed to the five hens. We needed eggs for food and then... Mom would make pancakes. Mom would make pancakes from five eggs, which didn't cost them an arm and a leg. Two weeks ago, when I talked to my dad, he said he missed the house which they had. He wanted to move back once and for all. No need now, he got that heavenly call. Lots of minor attacks and fears, he reached an amazing 95 years. God has given him grace beyond measure. Dad joined his heavenly father with pleasure. Dad said he believed the reason to live this long was that he should give more time to spend with God and then until his time on earth would end. I will miss your lengthy calls and voice, but now in heaven you rejoice. Weep not for me, but courage take and love one another for my sake. And we all probably know that Dad liked chocolate a lot. And maybe we think that uh, that's part of the secret. That's part of the secret of long life. But then before you think that means a few chocolate bars a day from now on, no. He always said a small piece tasted just as good as a, sm as a whole chocolate bar. Just as good... Um, a small piece tasted just as good as the whole whole chocolate bar. So one chocolate bar lasted at least several days. It's not that he ate many a day. <laughs> so, so we don't have to eat too much. <clears throat> Thursday, the day before he died, um, he ate, uh, I gave him a half of a paleta. He always enjoyed that very much. And, but of course, he called mom to share it, to share it with him. I didn't know it would be the last time. <clears throat> Even when mom was very sick in the hospital, he never went to visit her without a chocolate bar in his pocket. He put a little bit in mom's mouth, even when she was very sick. Maybe that helped her pull through. She got a lot of love. I got a piece of chocolate almost every time I went there. That, uh, sharing was part of, a part of dad. A lot of the times when he called me on the phone, he shared, um, he shared his, that mom started to, to eat chocolate with him together in the last year. And that was a, a big highlight for him. They enjoyed it in the last year since they were married for 70 years. Before that, mom didn't share his love for chocolate. So don't give up. There might be a change at 70 years. <clears throat> Another highlight for him was shopping. As long as he could, he went, he went to this store to do his shopping. And he enjoyed going, going places, um, going to look at, his, at the cornfield at, their, at the old place and other places. He never got enough rides. I miss you, Dad. Ja, dat ik zie dat niet lang niet hier voorbij was. We zijn 23 jaar bevriend, zodat we gaan. Ik ga de laatste 23 jaar zie ik in de familie was en we gaan. Ik heb ook alle hand beleefd door en, en nu heeft dat op die het zo nu 
wat nu normaal met de omvang waren. En ik leef, we willen vlak alle zeggen, we een reliefje was, wat hij wat men het weer te laat zal met jammer met hem, zo we hebben ben dat de eerste reply wat Betty had, wat ze een phone call krijgt, dat we het dit is een relief, zo. Ik heb een beetje een ganse familie dat vlak, maar ze maar hadden het weer met een expect dat het passeerde dat hij nu krijgt. En ik wat mij denken dat als we naar de hand komen, spazieren of whatever, dan we hebben een voet eerst we zorgen om steilen. We zullen de voetmark, fanmark is dat, we zullen niet helemaal dat aan het zwaai pouren. Dus als we allemaal zijn verarm te gaan en met zijn wheelchair zijn, hij wil die steilen dan maar afnemen. Ik geloof dat we zullen dat weer niet ophouden. Ja. Ik moest de schwierpapen ook nog eerst een beetje channel leren, voor ik hem alles verstoen kan. Ik weet wat ik nu al allemaal kan. Maar hij deed allemaal zo leeg met uh, de geblomen reden dat het niet klaar ruit zei wat, wat hij krijgt wil. Dan weer het iedereen je rood. Wist ik niet wat hij had gemeind. Maar hij en hij moest dat dus ziemlich leren wat hij had gemeind. Ik weet wat, wat probleem klaar niet aan mij trappen gaan. Maar hij is van aanvang dan voor ik hier wel maar aanmaat, want hij neemt dat dat wel dan, wie hij nog zoveel gezond had. Hij voor het einde waar dat changed, even dem, moest ik voor en hij voor maat. Ik weet niet hoe hij aan dat gerust denk, maar aan mij jonger even dem beter zelfs voor. En... Wanneer hij in het hospital werd, werd het meestal dat smal wat hij dan wordt een beetje van reden wou, uh, wou uh, hij dingen gedaan had, wat hij aan het schoen werd, zoals hij dat gedaan had. Hij wordt gelijk van niks zo je waarden weer. En wou hij wou op de arm nog wat genoeg zijn, hij ook wat aan zijn licht waar. Nou, als ik lekker ook al meest daardig had trek, wat ik hem dat verspreken deed. Dat we weer aan zijn mama tjammeren. Dat we allemaal dat eerste, en hij krank weer. Wer wat ze kan mama tjammeren, want hij met eenmaal niet meer hebben tjammeren. Dat moest een veel moe allemaal waar dat zei. We waren aan zijn mama tjammeren, ze goed is wie tjammeren. En nu is het zo wit. Oh, mijn starte hier, geloof ik, allemaal waar dat moest schmak verspreken. Yeah, dad was a strong man. I remember working with him in Bullet Tree Falls. And then he grabbed one of those big hoists that he had made from the railroad uh, chain or what you call it. And then he lifted up and he moved it. And then uh, when we looked back, when we were gone, we looked back and then we saw those little Mayas. They were trying to move it. And they... They felt that that thing was very heavy. They didn't know how he was able. And then he went back and he showed him. With one finger, he hooked that thing and he put it down to another place. So those things he kind of liked to show off a little bit. Yeah, I have a film with my dad before. My mom and dad bad spazierte in Paris. And... Um, ich habe es nicht schon mal gefordert, die letzten vier Jahre sehe ich, wenn es vier und wenn ich mal, wir haben keinen Rekord für Emma, so ich weiß nicht, wovon noch. Und äh, ich leite Emma schmackt, dass er Karen hat für sie gesehen. Das ist so, taub ist er und wenn ich taub, ähm, das wird mir besser sein, das ist ein Vater und Sohn. Und das gleich zu teasen. Und ähm, Leute, die Zeit, das macht mal nicht klar, wie er es ist, er kriegt, weiß, wo er ist, oder Hij voelt maar moet zeggen, hij moet allemaal van een steden naar de andere steden, ze weer allemaal en dan maar een stof. En een dag als ik de hand kom, dan um, zeer er waren dat, um, 
Sie führen immer danach nur die anderen Städte. Er hat mir auch viel gesagt, und ich dachte immer, war das so, wo war ich Papa, wo ich Frau, dort am das Register, wo das Herr Pesels hier steht, bleibt. Und dann frage ich, um, mit was von Fottig wird nur die anderen Städte geführt. Und dann checkt er sehr kreilig in meine Augen an und sagt er, dort wird mir nicht gut kommen, die dort zu sein. Und dann ähm, grabbelte ich, okay, was will ich nicht am dann sagen? Und äh, dann habe ich gesagt, wir wollen so, wir wollen beide nicht das Letzte was sagen. Und dann ähm, frage ich ihn, wie viele Räder hat das fertig? Und er weiß gar nicht, was er mir antworten wollte. Ich frage ihn, für zwei große Räder und zwei kleine Hauden. Na ja, ich glaube, das wird es dort sein. Also, ich glaube, wir haben ein bisschen mit Vorstellung, wir werden am Bad geführt. Das ist fertig, was er von einer Stufe nach der anderen Stufe führt. Yeah, I say that he had been driving up to the last day, but the last six years it was only with wheelchair. Santana von the Krautchen and we're now here for the welfare with him. Once I was out of school, then I started helping more taking care of grandparents. Um, that's when I really got to know them better. Especially Grandpa would sit at his side, I'd bring them food, and while he was eating, he'd tell me stories or stuff that was going on. And um, I've, done, I've got to know him quite well. He would tell lots of stories. I thought his life was very adventurous, and I admired him. I always thought of him as a, a courageous and strong man. But... Now in the later times, I realized that he had been scared quite often. It had not always been as sweet as it sounds. I realized how strong he really was. He had done things even though he was scared. I took them along to church the last while. He would really appreciate it. He was always asked two or three times if it wasn't too much work for me. I did it with gladness. I mean, it was, it was a joy for me. I would go and teach Sunday school and then be back, sit on the van with him. Also, when Grandma was really sick the last while, then I would keep him company because he didn't want to be alone. And so we talked and we went outside together. We took pictures and he said he needed a haircut. I told him I could give him one. He wanted to, he was like, you sure? Was, so we went outside and I gave him a haircut. It was a special time those days. Yeah, we had lots of fun moments with Grandpa. One thing that was special was he had a lot of stories. And, um, and the good part about all the stories was um, it took many years to go in one circle. He had many different stories. One story about the cattle hanging from the roof of the trailers. Um, this one load, the freezer shut down and um, he didn't know what to do so he pulled right into the curb by the te telephone booth and he called the company and they told him just to keep going. And when he arrived in the yard, they took a Franz house and sent him under the cattle there and, and they made him put grind coffee beans in there to take out the smell and then they sold it to the Chinese stores. And um, the Mennonites, they would always call them square heads. So that is some interesting stories that we've had. And, I've enjoyed working with him, cleaning up trash, and he would also know every part from which truck it came, which model and what color and everything. I thought he didn't have no junk. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anybody now? Uncle Mano? I could have listened to Fred who told that 
Jordan John, not the youngest here, and Jane Dex is 50 Dex, Jane Minel, the Messi that are. And I put on the horn, and on the pelt, pelt, up, and came on spazier. The Messi that are, that's a great transfer of Andorra. Jeline answered after they will not gesagt her that they had a shell from the World War II year and they had to go and ask her grandpa a question what that was for that was really special. Ich weiß in der Natur, wie man so der andere Mensch besieht, um, die soll das Schein haben, ich weiß ich habe da auch noch was von gekriegt. Wenn, he, wenn wir dort danach wäre, das dort, dann würde er sich kämmern, dass wir, wir Kaffee zu trinken kriegen und Schein und Frühstück würde er zu kriegen. Ich glaube, wenn der Mensch besieht, haben wir das Schein haben, so. Ja, ich sehe den Oberschirm. Wenn der Truck startet early in the morning, they go to Dan Riga. Or when they came home late at night, 10, 11, we usually heard it. Because it was very close, it was, we were not very far away. So. We had a lots of memories together with, with the Cornelsons and, uh, and our family. We were cousins, Uncle Heinz. Was, I would say he was kind of a quiet guy, but did it come to any vehicles? I don't think anybody could beat him about saying where that, what kind of vehicle that was. That was one thing that he would know. I don't know in the later years with all these new vehicles, but he always loved to talk about motors and trucks and whatnot all. One day I told him that uh, their dogs had always been at our place and I had taken their air rifle and I shot at one of them. Oh, and he kind of mumbled a little bit and he said, no, no, no problem. He, said, he did the same thing to our dogs. So we were even. <laughs> So, yeah, I always appreciate it, Uncle Henry. Anybody else? Hans Knolz is a bit of an uncle from the Dekke Zied. And we also come to Eremo Malikol when they were in the river and they were off. So, we see all of it when Hans Knolz is on the arm, what's that? And I learned from that that he did all the fits up, but that we can so much tell and he can understand. He was very blessed. He was a bit of a ride in the house. And when he was able to ride, then he rode. But he was not able to ride. And what he learned, when the young man was a man, he was a man who 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 was a Yeah, one thing that I remember in Camelote had a great accident with a hunting for with the Suzu pickup. And I was hunting and I was in a bumper of the fan and from the fair. And then I checked him to and I said, I'm going to go around again. That's what I said. Thank you. Thank
Ja, ik had dus Angel Dalla Machani leerd van een Noord 23. Um, als mijn mama en familie mal terugkomen van Paraguay, hadden we niet in 40 en dat werd hij aan zijn 40 verzorgd. Dat um, hij werd aan zijn Belgiet 40, Goudit 40. Ah, als haast niet maar voerd kreeg we dan op een hafnap je viert over hem. Vielleicht denkt ihr zusammen nach, was wir werden mit den zwei Kleidern leicht bleiben, dunkel bleiben. So werden wir feiern diesen Dollar dann. Wir haben, meine Mama hat ihm so lange gefahren, als sie Farmer der, ich weiß nicht mal, wo ein Jahr kriege. Ich bin sicher, dass wir ihm nicht noch hart zu antiken. Ja, dazu wäre ich dem Angel Chanli, der hier wird sein, dem so billig als möglich Hand zu kriegen, wenn Geld hatten we daar niet. Dat, dat geld weer aan je verhalen. En je moest het gewoon niet schaffen. So. En hij is hier eenmaal op een hafje was, dat wij hem zijn, waar hij dat het maken moet, om hij dan zijn vattig zijn te brengen. En later jaren heb ik ook hier eenmaal aan gespeeld. En hij, wie antwoorden, hij heeft weer bezorgd om wat hij met zijn vergone leven krijgt. Weer en, en, uh, en ik geloof dat hij, hij kreeg de vrede over dat. Ja, sinds mijn zuster dan nog in de familie werkelijk zijn acten aan het maken werd. Nou, eenmaal dan was dat ik er tegen uit huis huilde en dan zijn we op een hoofd. Hij wat me komen zijn is de grote tegen uit weer. Hij weer aan te worden, hij rekent die grote tegen uit zeer veel. Ja, ik geloof dat ik denk, we hebben denk ik zijn urban speciaal, vlak weer dat andere denken, maar... Hij moest in zijn mind komen opchecken, zeg ik, dat hij een rechte vlees. En die Lothar heeft nog een maand gehad. Lisa heeft weer te schrik gehad, en we hebben een week op het hospital. En hij heeft haar ook bezig. En hij zei, het is heel schmerk, dat is de oude lied. En hij kan mij eens niet tegen je hand komen, wat hij zich voorstelt. Dat we hebben een kleine stof. En we regelen een weg, en we regelen een andere weg. En hij wil ons zo rechtig bij. Dat is een schmerk. Ik heb veel jaren zijn trak met checken op de loot in de Stan Creek voor en dat we ons bekwaamd waar het leidt in de Chinese freezers. Ik geloof niet dat het even drie wordt wat hier gezegd wordt. Ik geloof dat wist we bij de checken die leveren deed. En we niet hebben alles heel interessant en sommige mensen willen vlieg op hier met eten want ze het alle wisten. Maar we dampten de checken dan aan. En een dag weet ze weten dat ik wil... Er is heel veel verteld van zijn trip naar Stan Creek, maar ik heb het moment en veel gemaakt. Twee dingen heb ik behouden, wat er ziemlich klaar erklärt wird, dat we, wie voor in de bouw een paar om dat frisch te eten. Dat we aan wichtig en dat deed we dan ook. Dan het nächste weer die schmale Brigge, wat we daar even voor. En wanneer hij wist dat er niet traffic werd, dan leidt hij naar Snow in de Brigge, wat niet dat ziet, vijf jaar zal af om trak weer. Dan reden we daarvan en zeggen dat de speed die erin schiet, want eens al af je rekt al. Ja, maar vlees is dat de tijdje was, weet ze hem, maar ze hebben zo sterk voor ons zien, zo over het jaar weer. Zo'n reden heeft je ook maar gewoon met je hart. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, I right now I'm putting what me <clears throat> to sound sense or us. Ik kwam een paar mal bij FTC voor de dag getroffen met een gelang alle oil en met zijn snikken. En dan zei hij dat ohne dat kan hij niet leven. En hij heeft nu, wanneer hij van 41 hart attack 
he had a massive heart attack at 41, and his PV90 he wore so. I might think what you don't have a talk so so long you short half. And I suppose that he felt that we are more than we are not in Mexico. The come I go to where she appeared hand, well the threat or whatever. And I'll feel my way here. He the end of the night he was in 22 rifle and that a. Well, she had a the really gross then he sealed him up to. Lens ik met jij hem huizen, dat er krak jij hem zool scheiden. En hij zei, die peert weer het jammer waar het hij je kon. Een joke. En dan een dag wil ze, hij veert hem oranges. Dus Guy Noord, die houdt wel 500 akker oranges. Zodat we hebben veel oranges te veren. En een dag zegt hij, nu heb ik de 99ste voer je veert. Dat denk ik me nog. Dat denk ik me nog. Dat denk ik me nog. I go on with to the truck drivers right here. Um, in case you need to you go to truck drivers stand. Then what you did, I think, you know what he said, what he you don't know what. And that when then black this young white leg, that must be kind of trough man fed there. And that not custom, you shouldn't go to truck driver. And he said, I couldn't do that small down. He was losing fed there via. And I think what he said, I tell me more he said, France was very soft. Being so hard to come in an ear, and my arms out and be checking, checking off on the knee is ah had all on the wand hanging. And I thought, and I was like, that what guns what knee? Why knee was on the dark side? And then fight in the house and me and the smeed and shoved the arm. And think I trig what I do is in the hand. And come in the water checking or that thinking. For water in the house and the smeed now. And when we then found it out on the field, that think I said, I was in towards that shoved for that. Um, was I made it not younger, we are on my dad for your mono and presencia, so on down your grandpa, they teed me mean mean dad, so me dang the hymel than we mean hose a cage or copy the red from storm and feel we that top top no his and dread that trig and make sure that the hose are right, yeah. Now clean by my teeth, thanks a lot. Good luck, Slay and Zoll. I'm not here yet, but I got the answer before you, and I'm going to do it now. So I think we can't do this. I can't tell me it's I did in this. I can't tell me what's I did in this trip. And I'm going to Big Creek for a tractor hole. And what I do learn today is that he really cared for the... He had one way learned to be able to do this. And he had me my mother asked if I could do it for him. And I had to do it for him. And then nobody did it. And then he said, nobody did it for him. And he had not been there. En moest hij zeer breken. En ik weet het niet meer aan je worden. Die hingen ter je rutsch houden en zeer oud. En zeer, nu is het niet door. Ik kan mensen niet ter boven. Die zegt me nu, weet wanneer je weet. Nou wat, hij voer nog een. Dat leek weer bij Middlesex en dan bij Silkgrass heel veel om. En je kan hingen checken aan. En dan klaar dat ik met hem kan. En we hebben een steden klimaat. Ja, twee steden klimaat zijn gummerutje reden. Zo'n laaie trak schoft niet. Dat was apparently niet de rutsche. Ik had gewoon geweest, dus dan leer ik daar wat en en plus dat hij deed de appels voor zijn dingen en loot daar een paar meer reden nog nog meer om een beetje van zo. Ik leer dat wel en dan dus ik laat zij deed naar mijn drie voor en dan reden we nog van andere dingen. Zo, ik mij heb ook geen nieuwe nog veel meer bij aan het zijn en ja, ook een familie wieder gaat te zijn wensen. Thank you, Shane.
Vi tänkte att vi gärna så spärr så går ni kvar och kan ni ha en uppfordring där hans knäts är dat vi en zaya färsa här driver. Det är för dem att säkra att jag ser andra jans. Och sen är det min bror Peter med att vi är stärkt om vad han vill att jag får en förhållande. Det har blivit en bit dikt om en bärnakant som kurv att jag tar om den var skäf för att jag ser akvi. Stärkt det om och brukar Peter vänja av. Det här skrivs det för det andra, så att det inte ska dra på honom. Det är så att det var en besidkallning. Det är för det stort att det andra var en hel besäkt alldeles. Det var en del trakt för det. Det är sehr intressant. Det är spännande så gott att vi har en trakt för att Tysby-Axel har. Det är en trakt för att vi har en röver för att lära vad en trakt för att komma från Belisette eller från Sommer. Det är en röver som inte är kunnig, då har vi det med att bringa hus. Hans Knäs hat wenig sein, aber nicht in Hilfsfunk, aber like, wir fahren mehr an die Stelle und wir haben sehr erfahren, dass wir uns mit dem Truckdriver in Hilfsfier haben. Und dann können wir einmal hier, wenn wir da bin, dann haben wir bis über die Gap, was war das? Weißt du, wie war das? Und dort haben wir die Hörhof, dass wir uns Truck wieder nicht. Wenn wir den Tüßbiet-Axel brauchen, dann haben wir das nicht hineinhängen. Der hat keinen Tüßbiet-Axel. En dan zijn er wat hij er alle vorten heeft in noem was. En dan is weer ook aan wat jij ook ons niet buurt met alle nieuwe korven bij en wat het meest deed met prijzen voor dieren weer en alles. En we hebben weer in de korts en bij een paan weer een uit de paan die had zijn alle korven met de brug van steeds en dan we hebben zeer niet zo wat van company dat weer. En dan de een moet later uit dat Lanser Emma had gezegd dat dat wir sehen, dass wir ein Schärf-Channel Mutter oder was. Nein, ich weiß nicht, was. Aber alle Mutter haben sie gesagt, ich habe ein bisschen in der Hand. Mein Bruder Peter, der ist wahr, ist gestorben. Aber die Bitte, die liegen bei uns. Da sind die nicht im Fehl, viel Korn genommen, und wie sie würden lösen, was von Madel dort sein. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Cornelson have taught me a lot of stuff, but since I forget stuff so easy, I forget most of it already. But anyway, one thing I remember, he um, had uh, ideas about driving. He had been driving trucks, and he always had ideas. And he, one thing I remember he said that he did was to, um, that he was trained to do when he drove in Canada, to avoid accidents, uh, not causing us not just not causing accidents, but also avoiding accidents, and that's one thing I remember a lot of time when I'm driving. Don't trust anybody on the road. Be uh, be safe and and avoid accidents. So we had a privilege to um, join his business in '89, and we worked together with him for 11 years, and um, that's um, been a blessing to, to know him. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, I still remember when he started that business. At that time, Uncle Abram Aldick had a little store in, in Dan Griga. And we would always stop there before we go home. Okay, I think uh, that's it for tonight then. And I don't know if there's any more chocolate left on the table. Just grab your hand of of chocolate, and I guess there's still some water, tea, whatever you would like. So, 
Thank you very much for coming and you're dismissed.